Hello there old and new friends. It's your friendly neighborhood sunshine squirrel. Welcome back to the channel if you're a returning viewer or subscriber and welcome if this is your first time here. Um, I'm a veterinarian that loves education and traveling um, and in today's video we're going to be talking all about a subject that's very near and dear to my heart and that is none other than the golden doodle. Now when it comes to the world of designer dog breeds, the Golden Doodle has definitely taken it by storm. <laughs> I remember when I got my very first Golden Doodle, it was many, many moons ago, and it was pretty much a really new breed. Um, you could barely find them. The main thing that was really popular, I can think as far as designer breed goes, would be the Labradoodle. Um, but I remember it was really different to have a Golden Doodle and really kind of odd everyone wanted a labradoodle um, but nowadays it seems like you can't go anywhere without seeing that lovable golden doodle and i think for a lot of you out there that are interested in getting a golden doodle or you have a family member um, or even a friend that's getting a golden doodle there's a lot of misconceptions out there about golden doodles and there's also just some general lack of knowledge when it comes to deciding on what specific golden doodle is right for you and yes there are more than one type of golden doodle so in today's video, join me as we walk through all the different types of golden doodles and maybe by the end of this video, you'll have an idea of which golden doodle is the right fit for you and for your family. So let's just start off with answering the simple question of what is a golden doodle? In its essence, a golden doodle is a cross between a golden retriever and a poodle. So a golden doodle in, its, in itself cannot be a purebred dog. These are referred to as designer dog breeds, meaning that it's an intentional crossing of two purebred dog breeds. Now, when it comes to a golden doodle though, they do have some sort of golden retriever or poodle ancestry, but the percentages of those ancestries can differ based upon the generation of golden doodle that you get. So the actual origin of the breed of golden doodles were developed to be hypoallergenic service dogs. Um, but for those of you that have a golden doodle and may have experienced this, I am one. Golden doodles are not hypoallergenic. There are some golden doodles that do shed and I will add quite profusely. Um, some of this does go back to the generation or how much golden retriever your golden doodle is. But if you're truly looking for a hypoallergenic dog, the best thing that I can recommend is contacting the breeder and seeing if they can do a test to see if you are reactive to that hair from their dogs. Um, but if you know someone in your family who really can't be around pet dander, best breed for that would probably just be to go with a straight poodle. Poodles, unlike other dog breeds, continue to grow their hair and they do have to be groomed and have it cut down. Other dogs, their hair will grow to a point and then it breaks off. When that hair breaks off, those little hairs that scatter around make pet dander and that's what the allergy is from. All right, so I've said a lot about there being multiple generations of golden doodles, but why don't we talk about the specific generations? So when you go to a breeder, you may hear them say that they have F1 golden doodles or F2 golden doodles or F1B or Elf Delta 9 or golden doodles. What do all of those numbers, what do all of those letters mean okay so let's start with one so an f1 is a golden retriever and a poodle cross just one golden retriever and one poodle now tends to be that in f1s they tend to be larger golden doodles so think of your standard size golden doodles which typically range anywhere between the 50s all the way up to the 80s maybe even the 90s depending upon if they're um, really large uh, parents or depending upon how much you feed um, but typically in this f1 generation we're going to get standard to medium size golden doodles now an F1B golden doodle is going to be a first generation golden doodle, so an F1 golden doodle bred to a full poodle. Now as we start to get into these later generations, that's when we can get a lot more variation in color of the coat as well as the size. So if you're interested in getting a micro golden doodle or a toy, tiny, tiny golden doodle, you're going to be looking at a multi-generation golden doodle, not the F1 golden doodle. An F2 
two golden doodle is when we take a golden doodle and cross a golden doodle. Now, F2 golden doodles aren't as popular as F1s, F1Bs, and the main reason being is because when we breed a golden doodle to a golden doodle, we don't always get those desired traits that we want for this designer breed. Now, is that to say an F2 golden doodle is not as good or doesn't make a good pet as another golden doodle? Absolutely not. Uh, but this is part of the reason why we haven't been able to develop the golden doodle into an actual purebred recognized you know akc dog breed because we can't take one golden doodle with another and consistently get the same results as if we were to breed let's say a golden retriever with another golden retriever and then an f1 bb is when we take an fb golden doodle and breed that to a poodle now these are the generations where you're going to begin to start to see the smaller size doodles and as we get kind of further along we can play a little bit more with the coat color so if you're interested in getting a golden doodle let's say that's brown and has white spots or white with brown spots or black and white spots like a panda golden doodle all those sorts of golden doodles are going to happen from further crosses and the main reason being is because as we cross further along we can get more variations in color we can also select better for different coat textures now when it comes to the golden doodles that have more of those poodle genetics, those golden doodles tend to have more of that hypoallergenic coat that we're going for. Those are the ones that will also have more of that curly coat. When you have a golden doodle that has more of that kind of loose, wavy coat, it more resembles the coat texture and quality of a golden retriever versus the later generation golden doodles that have more of that poodle coat. So now that we've kind of talked about the different generations of a gold doodle, let's kind of dive into some of more of the characteristics that we see with this breed. So when it comes to the coat, um, golden doodles can have a wavy, silky, curly, or a combination of all three. Uh, my golden doodle, um, a curly head, wavy body, <laughs> and so it just kind of depends um, on the generation. Um, it could also depend upon the coat quality and texture of the parents. Now when it comes to deciding on what coat type is best for you and for your family, it's important to also consider how much time you and your family are going to be able to devote to caring for this coat. Now, if your pet has more of that curly, more of that poodle coat, those sorts of golden noodles are going to require more brushing and their coats do tend to become a little bit more matted. So you're going to need to make sure that you carve out time daily to brush your golden noodle and also take them to the groomer. Now that being said, even if your golden noodle has wavy or straight hair, you still need to brush your pet, still need to groom your pet. But if they have that more of that curly coat, just know that it is going to be a little bit more labor intensive for you. Um, nose color. So this may sound a little bit odd, but you can have some golden doodles that have a black nose and some that have a brown and some that even have both. Um, some golden doodles will change their nose color as the seasons change. Uh, give you an example, my own personal golden noodle. Um, in the summertime, his nose was black and in the winter, his nose was brown. So if you see that color change, it could be just naturally characteristic for your dog, but just something to keep in mind as well. So let's talk about the personality. In general, most golden doodles are smart, loyal, joyful, super playful pups. Um, I have seen occasionally in my experience of uh, being a vet that there are some golden doodles that are a little bit more fearful and a little bit more timid. So it's really important that when you're visiting a breeder, when you're talking to a breeder about the type of puppy that you wanna bring home, you wanna make sure that this puppy is confident um, and that they have been actually exposed and desensitized to a lot of things. And then when you bring your puppy home, make sure to take them around, socialize them with other people, People, um, other dogs that are fully vaccinated um, and help them to experience the world um, so that when they are in different places, new settings, it isn't something that's really scary for them. And then now the big question that some of you are probably watching this video to get the answer to and that is which golden doodle is the best fit for you? Now it's hard for me to answer that question without knowing you personally, but I would say keep a couple of factors in check. Number one, think about where you live. Now, if you live on a property where you have a house, you have lots of land, or you have a fenced in backyard, a standard or a large size golden doodle may be a good fit. If you live in a condo or a townhouse setting, you may wanna consider a medium or a small size poodle instead. Another thing you may wanna think about is what is the dynamic of your family? 
If you have smaller children, you do need to keep in mind that a larger breed dog sometimes can accidentally hit children over, <laughs> bump into them, things like that. But if you get a smaller golden doodle, what you may also have to keep in mind is the puppy's safety um, and explaining to your children how to kind of safely interact with that dog and that even though they look like a stuffed animal, they really are not. <laughs> Another big factor that you're going to want to consider is the coat type. I know we've kind of talked about this a lot, but it's really important for those of you out there that do suffer from allergies or have someone in your family that does, make sure to take time to figure this out. Um, there are even some dog breeders out there that can help you pick the best puppy depending upon the type of allergies that you have um, and you can even do allergy testing to see if you are reactive to that particular puppy's coat um, I would encourage you if you are really allergic to consider getting a later generation golden doodle that has more of that poodle coat but remember keep in mind that with that more poodle coat it's gonna be tighter it's gonna be more curly and it is gonna require more maintenance at home and then another big thing that you may want to consider is the uh, particular golden retriever that your golden doodle came from. So when it comes to golden doodles, we have kind of your standard or American golden doodle, and then we also have the English or the teddy bear golden doodle. Um, the teddy bear golden doodle are actually made from English golden retrievers. English golden retrievers have more of a blocky head, um, they have a white coat, and they're not really bred to be sporting dogs. They're more kind of calmer, uh, more of kind of the couch potato. Whereas you had the high energy, American Golden Retriever with that beautiful amber coat. Um, if you go more for the English Teddy Bear side, those puppies are going to have more of that blockier face. Um, the coat color tends to be a little bit lighter. Those Golden Doodles can have more of a white coat. Um, if you go with more of the American or the standard Golden Doodles, those ones tend to be a brown, apricot, blonde, uh, black, things like that. So just keep that in mind um, depending upon your energy level and kind of what you want to do. If you're more of a laid back sort of person, you don't jog or you don't go and exercise every day, you may want to go with more of an English than the American Standard. That tends to have a little bit more energy. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you found this video informative. Let me know in the comments below if you have a golden doodle at home and what particular type you have. And also let me know in the comments below if you're thinking about getting a golden doodle and what specific type of golden doodle after watching this video you think is the best for your family. Make sure to subscribe and like for more and I will see all of you lovely people next time. Bye.